part of my grad studies program. Um, we've had, and this coaches forum is part of my internship, so uh, the first one we had Coach Mo from men's basketball talk about core values, then we had Coach Jones last month, he spoke um, about what qualities he wants to see and recruit in his student athletes, and tonight we're fortunate to have Coach Nine, he's going to talk about mental toughness for us. Before this starts, we're going to promote our Seagull Nation app. Um, if you have the app, you can check in and get 15 points. If you don't, I suggest you download it. It's in the App Store, Super Fan U. It's a blue logo. Download it, find Salisbury University. You get points for going to games, and at the end of the year, if you check in to each event, you have the most points, you can win up to like thousand um, bucks. I think there's like 500 dining dollars, a uh, gear package, a sweet experience at a game, all these great things. Um, so I encourage you to check in and you get points for being here tonight if you do have the app. And that's all that. So at the end we'll wrap up if you have questions for Coach Nine. Cool. Well, thanks for everybody being here. Um, again, it's, I got the mic on, so it's, it's like, right? I can't get right here, I really need it, right? Um, again, thank you for coming here. Um, again, this is a, a pretty important topic. Um, I've had the opportunity to present on it um, all over the country. Um, so it's, uh, to me, it's something that is really, really important to our performance. And so it was one that uh, you know, Brie asked if I'd come and present, and she said, what topic would you like to talk on? And this was the number one thing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about, you know, we'll kind of define it a little bit what it is, uh, we'll bore you a little bit with some research just because we have to do that, you know, but we're gonna keep it exciting and we'll jazz it up a little bit. Um, and then really about how do we develop it, okay? uh, I think that's the most critical uh, part for every athlete that's in here, uh, or anybody really. Um, you know, it's all about how you look at it, right? At the end of the day, it's about the perspective in which you take. Okay? Again, you can take these exact same stuff uh, if you're, you know, with your kids, right? With everybody, uh, it doesn't matter, right? If you're a professor, a teacher, it doesn't matter. Right, the skills are the exact same. Okay? Um, so starting off here, uh, first question that we, well, we're already not working. Right. There we go. Maybe, too far away. I guess we're going old school. Going old school. All right. Nothing. <laughs> what? Too much tech in here. This is the second time today. We had a tech issue where we This is a good way to start. This is the pressure's all down. Like, okay. I'll tell you what I'll do in a second. That works. First question of the day here. So we're going to have some interaction. Uh, we are going to come and bring some people up here to do the Tower of Hanoi. Uh, many of you athletes have done it already, and you understand what it's about. So we're going to try to get some other people up here to give them a little bit of, of what that really is and what all that takes. But uh, how many people here feel mental toughness is something you're born with? Again, hopefully that's not, right? Is it trainable? Okay. So again, yes, it's trainable. And that's what we want to talk, really, really talk about and really dive into, that this is, it's just a set of skills. Okay. Just like the same skills that you're going to take out onto the court, onto the field, anything, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a set of skills that is trainable. Right? The problem is we just don't train it. Right? We spend a large amount of time working on the skills related to the game. The problem is this piece up here, right, if it's not trained, and not trained well enough, could ruin virtually everything that you've been working so hard for. Okay? And we'll talk about that, we'll dive into that as we go, but we just want to make sure right off the bat that we do understand that it is trainable. And so we're going to show you here real quick, right, and what um, the Tower of Hanoi is all about. And this is one thing that we use uh, to introduce this concept. So I'm looking for what we need is I've got two teams, uh, roughly of like two to three people. So I need about anywhere from four to six volunteers. Who's in? Who hasn't done this? Before? Jay, come on. There you go, Jess. Come on. Yeah. All right. You guys, you guys can be on one. I need another team. Another team. Where? I need two more. Come on. Tell you my Hold your Yeah, you can come. You can come too. Yeah, bring them all. No, you can come Yeah, yeah, you're up here. You can put pressure on me too. All right. Awesome. You guys are over here on this side. You guys are on that side. I'm going to take gold. How are you guys doing tonight? 
That's awesome. Glad you guys came out. So. All right. So the, the Tower of Hanoi, uh, what we're going to work on here is they need to take this stack as it is, right? So you have the 45, a 25, a 10, a 5, and a 2.5. And, and that whole entire stack needs to look just like that, but it has to occur over at this cone here, right? So this cone for you guys and that cone for you, okay? Now, the rules, right? It's simple. You can only move one plate at a time, okay? That's it. One plate at a time. And you cannot put a big plate on top of a little plate. So a 10 can't go on a 5, right, and so forth. Any questions? Now, you guys are trying to compete against them, right? You guys are trying to compete against them, right? So. No. The only, three spots you have, the only three spots you have are the cones, right? So if you want to take the 2.5, you can put it here, you can put it there. It doesn't really matter, right? But you can only use those other two empty spots right now. Okay? Does that make sense? Any questions before we get started? You guys good? All right, pressure is on now. Okay, pressure is on. All right, it's a race. See so who can win first. All right, you guys ready? Set and go. Yep, there you go. One at a time. No, 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 no. You can't move that. This is the spot. That is the spot. Oh, yeah. There you go. They're already trying to cheat. Look at that. Oh my gosh. They have, look, they have no tools. They're confused as all get out right now. Right? He's like, where do I put the bait? What do I do? Oh no. How's it going? Alright, now. No, you can't move two at a time. Now you gotta go back to sleep. Nope. Only one foot at a time. Alrighty. Oh, what? No, 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 no. no. Okay, you're good. Alright, you didn't move two there, did you? Alright, just check. Uh oh. Why don't you guys move? Hey. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. We can't move the other one. we got to go from the top. That didn't do anything. I said, like I said, that didn't do anything, right? You guys know that didn't do anything right there. All right, make sure you guys can see in the back so we know what's going on. Right? Oh, jeez. Some of the key things here that we're looking for is really all we have to do is figure out what's supposed to do next. Right? It's a simple concept here of attentional control. So I'm diverging my their attention right, by them looking at me and talking with me and things like that. It's the same thing you're going to find out in the game, right? On the field, right? you're going to have bad calls. Um, they're getting there. Good. And relax. Okay? All right. So you guys are good. We'll stop. I'll show you guys. There we go. Show you show what's going on. All right. So. Okay. Again, okay. good. Now we'll show you exactly how we go through this process here as ter in terms of the training piece um, as we move. Okay, so again, what we are talking about here is really this is all about what's most important next. Okay, so this is the concept of attentional control, meaning that all I need to do is stay focused on the now. Right? I'm not worried about later on. Okay? What ends up happening in this game is we're always in our mind, we're just trying to figure out how do I move that stack to here. Right? That's the end result. Right? That's all I can think about. It's like trying to win the game when you're down two runs. Right? Right? And, uh, instead of just getting that base hit because we've got nobody on. I can't hit a two-run homer if nobody's on base. Right? We're trying to score you know, two goals and we're, you know, it doesn't work like that. Right? So what we want to focus on is just what's most important next at this point. So the most important thing right now is we've got to get this whole stack over here, but the only way to get that is to figure out what's next. So right now, to figure that out, the 45 we know has to get here. Right? So that means the 25 has to go here, the 10 has to go there, the 5 has to go there, the 2.5 has to go there. Right? So if we take that process and we go here and here, the 2.5 can come on. Right? That allows my 10 to get over here into its right spot. Right? Now I can sit here and stop. Right? Most important thing that happens next, the 5's got to get on there, so the 2.5 has to go here because that's the only way that it will work. Right, that allows my 25 to get here. Most important thing next is green 10's got to get on here. That means my five, uh, my two and a half, ha oh, sorry, my two and a half has to go across. Okay, right. So we got to get 10 on here. Okay, so that means my five has to go here, two and a half there. Right. We stop, we move, and it's going. 
Okay? So now five here, so that has to go here, here, here. Now my 45 can slide. Okay? Most important thing now, I gotta get the yellow on here. So that means green has to go there. Okay? A five here, two and a half there. Okay? Now it's my green to slide. Okay? Now my five's gotta get there because that's most important next. Yellow is on. Okay? Green has to get on next here. Okay? So if green goes there, that means five goes here, two and a half has to go there. Two and a half can come on, ten goes across. Five's gotta go here, it's only empty spot, it's done. Okay? It's 31 moves. It should take less than about 30 seconds, 45 seconds if we don't, right, if we know what we're doing as we're moving through. But we take that simple process and move, and it's good. All right, let's give a round of applause. All right, you guys do a fantastic job. Same time, good. Right, what do you guys think? Pretty yeah. All right, so real quick, in your guys' minds, before we start moving on, what were we thinking? Were you thinking some of those same things, like, oh, I've got to finish it, Absolutely. I get confused, and then, Jay, what'd you say to me? I don't know if everybody heard it. Right? You were like saying stuff to us, trying to close Yeah, right? And again, doesn't that happen in every day? In everything that we're doing, right? The other team is jawing, right? The ref makes a bad call because they're, they, right, they always do, right? Obviously, right? I mean, at least that's how what we believe, okay? So it's going to happen, okay? Your, your mind is going to, to go away from where it needs to be. Okay? So what we're going to talk about here is really about mindset and really dive into what our mindset is and what it's all about, okay? Um, looking at what mental toughness is and what it is not. Okay? And these are some key things that I want to make sure that we understand that it is not. Okay? Uh, and I think let's start up here in the top right. It's hard to take a wuss and make a hard court no matter what you do. These, when I went in, and because I was doing this presentation, and just like, you know, I'm going to go to Google. Because that's what everyone else does. Right? Go to Google, and we Google mental toughness to see what the first thing comes up. Well, these were the first five articles. They came from the first five articles that were up there. So, if you have no clue of what you're doing and you say, hey, mental toughness is extremely important, the first thing you're going to do is go Google it. And then you're going to read the first couple articles that are on there because they must be the most important. And this is what we get. Right? Another method of developing mental toughness in the weight room is to construct a workout routine where there is nonstop movement for a certain amount of time, sets without rest or water breaks. This is nuts. Okay? But the problem is, like, this is stuff that's beautiful. <coughs> Like a hard workout is going to make me more mentally strong. Well, think about it here for a second. When you look at the mental toughness aspects, and you want to see when an athlete is most mentally tough, what's going on? There's adverse situations, right? We have bad calls. It, it, you know, we just got scored on. We gave up a run. We did this, right? So again, a fair amount of negative. In our mind, what's actually happening? Right? We have a lot of maybe negative self-talk okay, that's occurring. Okay? How is a workout? going to help me through that. I don't think it's going to. What that workout may show me is that you may have the capability, but it doesn't mean you're going to be mentally tough in that situation when you're down 10 with two minutes to go, or you're down 20 and you just give up. It doesn't mean that at all. So I wanted to get that out of there. Okay? Again, we already talked about usually something that you're born with. Okay, now your environment can play a role right, through your development. Okay, but that, it's not, we're not going to just say, oh, well, it's my environment. Right? It's the easy way out. Right? Because we say it's a skill, it's, develop, it's developmental, be trainable. Right? So we can train it. So we can't use that excuse. And again, we'll talk about the mental aspects related to that excuse. Um, where we talk about blaming, complaining, and uh, defending. Okay? Um, don't let your athletes know you're trying to make them tougher. Why not? And what's the secret? And we all want to be good, right? I'm pretty sure there's not one athlete that says, you know what? I want to be bad. Like, I would like to step up to the plate, watch three pitches go right by, and walk back to the dugout today. Right? I think that's what I want to do. Right? It never happens. Right? We want to be the best that we possibly can in every moment. Right? So if we're saying that the mental piece plays such a large role in playing the game and being effective in the game, why would I not want to tell you that we're working on it? that we actually truly want to develop it. Why would I actually carve time out to actually work on it? Right? Can we? Can we find time to do that? Can we put, you know, in certain activities, can we do where, can we set the activity where we actually put you in an adverse situation? And then after it, during a rest break, can we talk about the mental approach that we took? Why not? Well, if I only have a conditioning session, and I'm only going to be out there for 45 minutes, 
I can do that. I can organize that and structure that, right? But I've got to be able to willing to work to do that. So you've got to work to find time, right? I mean, you know, we have a couple coaches that are in here, but again, we've got to work to find time, right, to really create this and develop that, okay? All right. Um, yeah, we talked about the physical toughness piece. Okay, so it's, it's, that's what it is, right? It's, it has that workout. It has nothing to do. So we want to separate that. Right? We want to get away from that. All it's going to do is mean that you work very hard in the weight room, right? and that's it. Good. Great job. Right? And I, I love that. Right? I love that you work hard in the weight room. That's awesome. Right? I mean, that's my job. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to mean you're going to be ex exceptional and, and thrive mentally when you step out onto that field of play. Okay? All right, so now this is the boring part. Uh, I hope that's not boring you already. Right? But, Again, I just want to show you that it's a uh, set of skills. So look at some of the concepts that are in here. Right? So you have like motivational level, coping skills, confidence. Right? We'll talk about all, a lot of these as we go here in terms of how we develop them. Okay? Competitiveness, uh, team unity, preparation. That's probably one of the most critical ones that's in here. Okay? So that was you know, back in, in, in 01. We've got some here in 02. Again, same thing. We started looking confidence focused, right? being able to control under pressure. Okay? In this type of situation up here, we start to add the pressure in. Yeah, and how do you how do you go about that, right? Now it's a competition, right? They don't want to lose to the next group. Nobody does. Nobody wants to lose. Okay, so all of a sudden I've added pressure to that game, to that activity. And now the problem is this activity isn't going to transfer out onto the field. It's an introduction. It's an introduction to show you the value, right, of the skill that needs to be developed. And that's what we're going to talk about as we go. Okay. Some others here in 02, okay. highly motiv uh, motivation, under pressure, cope, right? It's the same things that just keep repeating over and over and over again. These are the key concepts that we want to work to develop and improve. Okay. They're the skills. Okay. Looking at it, what we see in competition versus what we see in training, right? Looking at what your environment brings about, right? We created a certain environment up here for this activity. Me talking in the activity was specifically designed to bring you out of the focus of you trying to do what you're supposed to do. Okay. Right? Post-competition, how do you handle failure? How do you handle success? Okay. Right. All critical things that, that we'll dive into being more mentally tough. Okay. All right. All right, so simple definitions. So we have a rough idea here, an individual who is motivated, prepared, <laughs> focused, and emotionally stable. Great, love that. The problem is, yeah, that's, that's a mentally tough athlete, but can we do that 100% of the time? How many people here have never set, thought the ref made a bad call? Right. So I can tell you right now, maybe you're mentally weak. Right? You must be. No, right? mental toughness is not something that's all or nothing. Right? You're going to have periods where you're going to be very, very mentally strong, and you're going to have other periods where you're not. And so that's going to be one of our first pillars uh, when we get here is about awareness, is being able to figure out when you're not. Okay. Right? Oftentimes you also hear it, hear it as grit. How gritty are you? Yeah, per, uh, perseverance, passion to achieve a long-term goal. Again, I mean, you know, gritty on a Friday night, I don't know. You know, like we've all been there. You know, we know what goes on on a Friday night, Saturday night. Again, are you, are you reaching towards that long-term goal by the actions and what we're doing? I don't know. It doesn't mean you're not mentally tough. It doesn't mean you're not gritty. Okay? It means you're not gritty or mentally tough maybe in that moment to achieve this long-term goal. Right? Again, stuff that we can work on and work to develop. Okay? Um, again, Angela Duckworth has done a lot of work on grit. You have the ability to assess and measure your grit. Okay? So you do a 12-point grit scale to kind of see where you're currently sitting. Give you a rough idea. It's not going to dictate, again, whether you're mentally tough or not, because it's situational based. It depends upon the situations in which you're in, and that's where you're going to see that uh, mental toughness, whether it shines or it doesn't. Okay. All right, so we're saying it is a set of skills. It allows me to perform optimally. <coughs> it doesn't matter what I'm in. And if I'm at work, okay, I could come in there and be, you know, just bad attitude. Man, I don't feel like working today. Right? Nothing's going to get done. So it doesn't matter, right? These are the same skills that you'll take and use in every bit of life. Okay. All right, so four keys here to developing. The very first one that we have to do is we work to be a servant leader. And we'll talk about what that is. Our second, we're going to go through uh, eight pillars of mental toughness. And that's going to be the, the very bulk of what we're trying to accomplish here. 
Those are going to be the key things that help us and give us something to look at and how do we develop that. Okay? And then the last piece is we have to look back. Okay? We have to reflect on how it went. Okay? So we're going to analyze our need and then intentionally develop the, the growth okay, from that piece. Okay? Most of the time we may go through it, yeah, now but do we ever look back? Okay? How could I, what could I have done better? Okay? I know for me, I've got a 10-year-old, a 6-year-old, and a 10-month-old, and uh, to be honest, there's times where I, they, I let my emotions get to me. You know, we snapped. No, it's not bad. It's not like, right? Just, I got, I got mad. You know? My daughter was like, she's like slow as dirt in the morning. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, we, we got to go. We got to get out of the house, you know, and, and she's just like, <clears throat> right? And I would have snapped, right? So, again, I've got to look back and say, man, was that the right way to go about it? Right? Was I, did I give in? Did I give in to my, my emotions? And at that point, Yes, I, was, I might have been mentally, I'll say one. I was mentally weak in that moment. Because it didn't accomplish anything other than I'm now pissed off and so is she. So I can look back and figure out how to, use, how to go about that in a better way next time. I'll let you know tomorrow morning. Okay? Okay. All right, so servant leader. Okay? Uh, again, we're not going to spend a lot of time here. We just uh, uh, want to make sure that we understand. I mean, this could be a whole presentation on its own. We're talking about leadership, leadership development. Uh, next semester, yeah. next semester, leadership, okay, um, right, again, just take a look at them over there on the left, right, if you don't uh, embody those now, uh, figure out what we need to do to, to start, right, this is level one, right, if we cannot be a servant leader in what we do, right, everything else in terms of the mental uh, toughness piece is going to be uh, a struggle, because it's not about, um, well, everything else, it becomes, it's about you, right, as a servant leader, it's not about you, it's about everybody else. And that's where step one has to come from. Okay? If it's all about you, right, you're going to be too focused on you and what you do, and it's, it, you're just going to be, again, that's weakness one. Okay? Again, there's some more research there if you want to read it. I've got uh, all, everything at the end for you. Okay, now the big, the big part of it here is our pillars of mental toughness. Okay? Uh, so we're going to go through each of these eight, um, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, other things as we go through this. And um, we'll start off here in awareness. Okay? So awareness, you have physical awareness, mental awareness, that's the big one that we're going to stick with today. Uh, emotional awareness, we'll talk about that as one of our pillars. Um, and then situational awareness. Okay, um, We're going to bypass physical awareness, right? you can read what they are. I want to talk about what uh, mental awareness is. It's the thoughts that we have in our mind. Right? It's your mindset. Right? Um, you know, it's just a pattern way of thinking. Right? That's what your mindset is. Like, What's going on in your mind right now is the pattern way of thinking Right, about a situation, circumstance, okay, that's going to influence your reaction. That's the key word there, reaction. Okay. We'll talk about uh, E plus R equals O here in a little bit. Okay. But it's, it's an event. Right. Something just happened, and you're going to have to react to it. Right. Now, what is your mind saying? Right. Think about it. Go back into your mind. You didn't like that call, third strike. Right. You don't agree with that call that was out of the court. Or on the field, right? Because it's, we all know that it's probably the easiest one that we can talk about. We didn't like it. What were we thinking? I know what you're thinking. I think that guy's an idiot. Doesn't have a clue what he's doing. Right? Again, the problem is though that mindset that we're now taking is carrying with us, right? and that's what's now impacting our performance in a negative way. So we want to get rid of that. We want to try to eliminate, right? I don't say eliminate, but have a better mindset, a better approach yeah, that we're going to take. Because what can you do? How many times have you ever changed anybody's mind? Right? Stitch, how many times? You, you've been doing it for how long? Yeah. You never change anyone's mind. Not any umpire. Nope. Right? Nope. I did it one time. So I coached the Collegiate Summer League up in New York, and this was the only time it ever happened, I think, in my lifetime. And, and I, I, I walked out there and I told the umpire that, um, that he was an idiot. And I, 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 was fully, I was ready to get kicked out. I hadn't been kicked out all year. I wanted to do it. He said he did. So I told him he's an idiot because my center fielder dove for a ball. Why would my center fielder die for a ball if it went over the fence? Are you telling me my guy's that stupid that he would die for a ball that landed over the fence as a home run? Right? And so I walked out there and then I didn't get, I, he said he changed the call. 
and um, the other guy got thrown out from the other team. But anyway, so that's the only time. Okay, one time in a bazillion opportunities, I guess. Right? Um, anyway, um, so again, understand it's just the pattern way of thinking. Okay? Your mindset. We're going to bring up different situations and look at them and understand, start to understand the way in which we think. Okay? Again, it's a response. Like, this is one of the most important things. You have an event. How do you respond to it? So here's event one. It'll be tomorrow morning, and especially for all of our uh, uh, fall teams, right, or our spring teams. Okay? So they've got the fun run tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And so that alarm is going to go off sooner than we normally goes off. Okay? So um, and, and just in, in general, how many people hit snooze in the morning? Don't be scared. Okay, get your hand out there, right? Right? We hit snooze. Okay? Now, again, think about it. In your mind, what's happening? Okay? What's your mindset? For those of you, I, you don't have to say it out. But I want you to think right now. What is your mindset when you hit snooze? And I'll talk it out a little bit as we go. But most likely you're thinking, I'm tired. I want to go back to bed. I'm not ready to attack my day yet. I'm not ready to get out of here. Here's what my challenge to you is. Don't do it. Change your mindset. Because right? it's the very first thing you do in the day. It leads your day. It starts your day. It builds off of that. So right off the bat, you're already having a negative, poor mindset about what you're ready to do for that day. Change it. Change the mindset. Attack the day. Put your feet on the floor and get up, right? It's whatever goes on in your head. You have the opportunity to choose what goes on. You choose. And I don't get to choose for you. You get to choose. So again, tomorrow morning you could hit that snooze. Right? But what it's telling me is that you're not willing to attack the day. You're not willing to be the best you can be right then and there. Put your feet on the floor. Get up and say, hey, let's go. Let's get after it right now. Right? I've got today. Right? I don't know if I have tomorrow. Right? But I've got today to be the best I possibly can be. Right? Right? And for me, this sits on my desk. Okay. I have the ability to uh, impact, influence, and inspire greatness. Okay. Yeah, those are my values. That's what I want to live by. Okay. That anybody I come in contact with. It doesn't help if I'm hitting snooze. Because I'm going to miss somebody. Okay. That could be my wife in the morning. Right? It could be my kids. It could be getting up and going to work. Right? And then having a, a negative attitude because I'm still tired. Now, by hitting snooze, what can happen? Right? Physiologically what can happen. We can re-enter back into a REM cycle. And now we can be woken up in the middle of a REM cycle and actually feel more tired. Jeez, now what do we do? Now you have to get up because you're going to be late. And if you're late, ooh, right? Oh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be really bad. So, how about this? Change it. Attack that day. Attack everything that you get to do. Again, you get to choose. It's your mindset. How about this? Let's choose to be great in every bit of everything we get to do. You want to be the best at what you do? Right? That's a choice. It starts right here. I get to choose what I get to do. Right? If I don't want to work today, right? again, somebody else is. But that was my mindset. It's like, oh, I'm just going to be lazy today. I'm not going to do you know, my, my winter work here coming up. <clears throat> right? Um, you know, to, to make sure that I'm ready for my spring season, ah, I'll just do it tomorrow. Okay. And somebody else is working, okay. but the mindset for you is not to be the best you can, to be the, the, the best, the greatest. Right. And I think that's what everybody wants. Okay. Pretty sure there's not one person that I just want to be like lazy and a bum and not have any money or really do anything. Right? Nobody would say, yes, that's me. Right? To a T. Right? Nobody's like that. So tomorrow morning, right, attack it. Put your feet on the floor and let's go. Okay. All right. How do we create a great mindset? Again, we already told this, right? Now we made it nice and big and red that it's a choice. Right? The first one's your attitude. Okay. And then understanding the concept that B plus R equals O. Okay. The attitude that you select every day, in every moment, at every event that happens in your life, right? And we said snooze or hitting the alarm is your first event of the day. Right? The second event of the day. Once we got out of bed, is making your bed. How many people make their bed in the morning? Right? Some of us are like, well, I'm going to make my bed. I'm just going to get back into it later tonight. 
Again, but what happens here by making our bed, you've accomplished one thing already. And now, in the start of your day, you've attacked it, and you've done one thing successful. We're attacking that positivity. Right off the bat. Get up, right, and make your bed. So tomorrow morning, right, you're up, and the beds are made. Okay, we got that? Every single, everybody here. Whoever's not here, right, make sure your teammates know. Okay, that's what they're going to do. And right, we'll talk more about E plus R equals O here in a second. Okay. All right, just so that we can see it for all our visual learners, the mindset's critical. Okay, mindset dictates the attitude. Attitude dictates the behaviors that happen from there on. Right? Obviously, if I've got a bad attitude, I'm probably not going to work very hard. Okay? If I don't work very hard, okay, what actions happen? Do I get any better? Do I get stronger? For us in the waiver, do I get stronger? Do I get more powerful? No, I'm just lazy. Right? And I'm not going to put the correct workloads on. I'm not going to work as hard as I need to. And I don't get better. So I don't see results. And I see no improvement in performance. All because of the bad attitude that I have. I'm not going to say a bad attitude or the lack of attitude that I may have. I'm just kind of here. Like, I'm, I don't know where I'm at. I'm just kind of, I'm here today. Right? Think about it. Think about your teams in which you have. How many people are just there? They just exist. They're there. We, we, we're thinking right now in our head. I'm thinking of people too. Right? Who just exist. Whether they were there or not, it didn't matter. What they bring to the table. Did they get better? Did they help somebody else get better? Yeah, and that's all part of this. All part of that attitude that we take. All part of that mindset. Right? That's going to help drive performance. Again, that's my job. My job is to make sure that we're better athletes out on the field. And we can do all the behavior work that we want. That's lifting. But if I lose that over there, our behavior work isn't going to be as quality as it needs to be. The other part is, then we're, you know, we still have that. Maybe we did get a killer workout, maybe we fixed it for an hour. But then after that hour, you lost it, okay. that attitude. And then you went home and sat on the couch <coughs> for the next three hours, right? And you didn't eat correctly, and you just you went to, I don't know, anywhere virtually, right? Just poor eating, just awful, or not at all. Okay. Again, then we're gonna have, you know, results are, are down, performance is down, okay. so again, we got to be able to go in and out. There's going to be times where right, your mindset's going to be bad, right? but I cannot give in. We're going to talk about it, how we go about that. Okay? All right, so E plus R equals O. Okay? Right, so the R factor. So if you ever want to look at it, great podcast. It's a Focus 3 podcast by Tim and Brian Knight. They do a fantastic job with this. Uh, to me, this is something that is, is critical. Right? We have it uh, in our weight room, right? so it's right underneath the TV. Okay, this is where we bring everybody up, so at least we can see it. Okay. Um, this is one thing that they talk about as well, and um, I agree. You completely blame, complain, defend. Right. How many times have we heard, I can't? We hear it all the time. When we bring this game up, right, there's some of the uh, here, right, some of the teams that are here, we bring this game into, like, oh, I can't do that, I hate this game. Today's was, oh, I don't want to do biz buzz. Right? Right? But that's the first thing. Um, oh, I don't remember who I was talking to. It, it was literally earlier today. David, I don't know if it was you or not, but the first mindset thing that somebody, like it was their first thing that we saw that day. Was it you? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, he said, good, you know, good luck tomorrow. And he said, oh, I'm going to need it. <laughs> wait, wait. What do you mean? Like, can we see how automatically, right, right off the bat, the mindset that we took isn't going to put me in a place to be the best? To me, there's no such thing as luck. There isn't. Don't tell Marge that. But again, I don't believe there isn't anything in luck. It's about the preparation, it's about the skills that you're about to, you know, we're going to go through here. How hard we prepare, how mentally well we respond what our responses are in the E plus R equals O. Okay, so looking here at the above or below the line, okay, um, again, the first critical piece here is awareness. If we're not aware of what is quality versus poor quality, how do we know? I may think that something down here on the bottom side right, might be okay. I also may allow it with my teammates. 
again, it, it can't just be about you. Right? It's a bigger picture than that. So what we want to do is we want to create this, right? We, you know, something that you can do on your own, right? What are above the line responses? Okay, now this is the basic one. This is where it starts. Draw a line on the whiteboard and say, hey, what does it mean? You know, what are some positive things? Just positive things. And this is what we see. This is what gets thrown out. Right? We solve, we make choices, we find better ways, we're accountable, we take action. Right? Again, you can continuously think of a lot more. We've got great energy. Right? We're personal. Now look at the bottom ones. We blame, we make excuses, we think we're the victim. There's a lot of I can'ts there. Okay? We wait for others. Okay? We were lifting session the other day, just standing around waiting. Not helping out, right? not working very hard. If we don't put them out there for people to see, you can just say, oh, I don't know, I didn't know. That's I didn't know. And I think that's what we heard. Oh, I was doing everything I was supposed to. Okay. Maybe we hadn't put them out there yet. So, again, you can fill these in a lot more. Okay. Uh, so this was like one of the examples uh, in the weight room. Um, I don't remember if it was the men's basketball. Um, me and we just drew a line on the board and there they go. Right? You can do it on your own piece of paper. Right? What are above the line responses that you need for your sport? What are below the line responses? And now over here, um, on this side, is that as you know, taking it into action now. Let's make it more specific. Right? We can have those below the line like I argue, okay? but uh, I need to be more specific than that. I need to transfer better to what I'm going to be doing in the live sport play. Right? So let's go. Right? So this is what those men look like after that. So we took it another day, and now we started dividing it out. These are called event sheets. Now we define the specific events that we have. Okay? We'll make it a little bit clearer for you so you can see it. So now there are events, pre-practice okay, and practice. We just broke that down. That was that middle portion there. Um, so taking it and actually seeing what it looks like. In a pre-practice, what does it look like in the locker room? Now I'm telling you exactly what the above-the-line response in the locker room should be Right, prior to a practice. I'm also telling you what it should look like right, if it's below the line. So now as a team member, if I see something that's below the line, I, I have the opportunity to go say something. We'll show you how to make it stronger as a team here in a little bit. And it goes back to what Coach Mo was talking about with some core values. Right? But again, they're now defined for you. Right? Take the time. I think volleyball. You guys had this on your uh, on your whiteboard inside of your um, inside your cage. Right? They had the above the line and below the line responses. Right? So now we all know. Right? And again, you're going to have below the line responses, right? and that's okay. It's about the awareness piece and how do you get out of that. And I need everybody else around me to maybe help me get out because I can't see it. I'm tunnel vision and I'm just pissed off of whatever just happened. I need people to say it. And it's, they've got to be okay. Right? Gotta, it's got to be okay to say it. Say, Matt, get it together. Or whatever a word may be that you have as a team that you come across, right, that you bring together. You've got to figure what that is. I can't tell you. It's got to come from you because that's when it has meaning. If I tell you, it's like, I have something else Matt's talking about that. Okay. Right? So create your event sheets. All right. How to respond. Now, so again, as we have this awareness piece, you're starting to understand what's going on. You've got to find it. And the very first thing in our E plus R equals O is the event that's happening. And it doesn't matter what the event is. It's any event. And the very first thing that we have is press pause. So take time. Right? We talked about this today with our BizBuzz group. Right? So if you ever played BizBuzz, it's... Um, Today we used the seven, right? We used seven, <laughs> seven. So anytime the, the number seven came up, you had to say biz to replace it. Anytime a multiple of seven came up, you had to say buzz. Right? So obviously, up to like 21, we were good. And then after that, ooh, no. right? it got it got tough. And then we're sitting there, we're thinking, it was like 32. What did, did he see? Did he? Okay, right? maybe it was good, right? And again, like, that's what it was. Like, we were so stressed out that I was going to say the bat, the wrong number and have to start all the way back at one. Right? 
because we make it a competition for all of our out-of-season teams. And we're so stressed out that I'm going to say the wrong number in front of my peers. Again, we purposely did that on purpose so you're in a pressure situation and I want to see how you're going to respond. Right? And we see that and we're like, uh, or we say it very quietly. You know, how many people today said 32? Right? Like with some conviction. Right? We're very confident with it. Right? Yeah, and at the end of the day, if we would have just pressed pause and thought, right? think about how easy the game is. We're in a circle. Right? We had nine people in a circle. Right? So if you said 21, how many people do we have to count until the next number? Seven. Right? So we just count seven people. If I'm not in that seven, I'm not going to be a multiple. I don't have to say bus. Now, if a seven comes in, I've got to say this. That's my job. Just go slow. You have two minutes to get the highest number possible. That's it. Everyone said you have to do it in the first 15 seconds. <coughs> Press pause. <coughs> Anything out here? Okay. You guys step back, right? And you guys did it as well over on your side is that we were starting to move, and then we actually pressed pause, but I don't think you knew it, or maybe it was intentional. Right? We pressed pause because we, we, were, long, we were confused. We didn't know where to go. Again, the press pause that I would like to see comes before. Right? Here is the event. I've got to get this over there. Press pause. And there was a couple people in here beforehand. Um, and I was up here going through it, making sure I was right. Okay? It was something as simple as, okay, if i got to get 45 there, 25 here, get, uh, 10 here, 5 here, 2 and a half there, good. 2 and a half has to go over there. That was it. Press pause before we start moving. As soon as we do that, we're, we're ready to roll. Right? That's step one. Right? Press pause. Gives you time to think and be and, and clarify. Right? So when that ref does make that bad call, <laughs> at least the bad call that you think it is, I mean, you, you press pause. Right? By me lashing out, right? whatever that lash out may look like, right? what is that going to get me? Where does it get me? Has it has it ever benefited anybody? It's crazy, but we see it all the time. Okay. I would say the same thing for any parents that are in here on the sidelines. Okay. I mean, just, I mean, go, to a, go to a youth game, holy cow. <laughs> I mean, I understand, I think the, the referees, I mean, they're not the, the world-class referees. I mean, they're like you and me, you know? They, they may have the same playing experience as you and me. Okay. Maybe even less. At least they're willing to step up and do it. Other people aren't. Okay. Again, right? Press pause. At the, in the grand scheme of it, and I ask any athlete in here, um, so most of us are what, like 19 to 20, 21? Okay. So when you were eight, what was your record? Anything? What was your batting average? Okay. What was any, anything, any stat when you were eight? How about nine? How about 10? Let's get closer and closer. How about when we were 14? The freshman in high school. Any stats? <laughs> you might have one or two that were big, right? Might have that one or two, but that's about it, right? Because now my, my next thing that I would say to you is, okay, tell me what happened in the fourth game of the year. What does this mean? It means that, that there's not a lot of value in it. Okay? So when we tend to place a tremendous amount of value in that moment, right? and we sometimes act a little psycho. Okay. Again, press pause. Take that step back. Okay. Now, once you press pause, it allows you to get your mind right. Okay. It allows to start working on positive self-talk. What happens when we talk about emotional control? The emotions tend to take over first, okay. and that's where we see that lash out. And that's why we want to press pause, okay. so that we slow down. We don't let our don't let our emotions take over. Okay. That's when we see the penalties. Things on us, we see the ejections. And this is at every, watch the elite level. I mean, last week we saw a helmet being thrown. Take another guy in the other head. You don't think that was emotional? From both ends, right? Not just one. On both ends, it was extremely emotional. They allowed it to take over. Where's that, where's that guy now? $31,000? Uh, could be a possible career. But one more. If you would have just pressed pause at the end of the day, did it really matter? For either of them. Okay. They let it take over, right? So again, these are some of the best world-class athletes out there. 
But in that moment, in that situation, their mental toughness wasn't existed. It didn't exist. Okay? And they let things take over. Okay? All right, so once we have that, we get our mind right. It's the positive self-talk. Right? It's the refocus. And right? we'll talk about how we do that with routines. Right? Hopefully, everybody has a routine that they go through in some capacity. If you don't, now's the time to start working on that. It could be a deep breath. It could be some crazy thing like Omar Garcia. You guys might not know him. Uh, it might be too old for you guys, but the play for Boston. Um, and he would do all this like crazy stuff with his batting gloves every time. And it did piss people off. Like, Let's go. You know, hurry up. And it wasn't anything. It was all about clarity. And it cleared his mind. Allowed him to focus on what's most important next get his attentional control, and focus on that next pitch. And that's it. Not what just happened, but what's about to happen right now. And attack that. Because you can't do anything about what just happened. You can only do what's next. And that's where you need to focus. Okay? So step up. Okay? Your arm makes the difference. Your arm is your response. Okay? You have that event. Okay? You're going to respond in some capacity. That R dictates the outcome. Right? That's the E plus R equals O. Okay? You have your event. Your response will dictate your outcome. So if that response right, comes from that negative self-talk, and it is a poor response, helmet being thrown, right? here's the outcome. Change the response. Okay? That's what press pause allows you to do. It allows you to get your mindset right. It allows us to step up with a high quality R, a high quality response. All right, number four, adapt and adjust. Okay, don't blame the E, change the R. Okay, ah, they don't know what they're talking about. And here's the thing, just listen. Right, this is what I get to do. You, step, you just go to sit in the stands and just listen. Holy cow. Okay? The amount of E, you know, blame in the E. You blame the event. They don't know what they're talking about. They're hard, blah, blah, blah. Right? Change the response. Do we need every call to win the game? If we do, we're not that good. That's the mindset shift we need. Do I need every single call to go in my favor to win the game? And if I do, then I'm not that good. That's just how it goes. I change the mindset. All right? I like number five, make a difference. Your R is another person's E. This is where you get to impact, influence, and inspire. This is where I get to make somebody else good, right? not just myself. So how I respond is going to change somebody else's eat, somebody else's event for that day. It could just be me walking in and saying, hey, how's it going today? Right? Just put my arm around you and go, right? you doing all right? I could have not done anything. My, my response could have just been, oh, just let him walk on in right? and go through to the weight room. Right, lazy, not work very hard. Again, I now change their their e. Right? My response to that situation changed their e. Right? I might be able to say, hey, right, mindset, attitude, let's go. Come on, we gotta get it right. We got one hour to get after it today. Wait. One hour, that's it. Right? Let's change it. Let's go. Right? You can back down afterwards. Not a lot, but a little bit. Right? We're gonna amp up soon. And here's the thing, right? how you do anything is how you do everything. Again, how you do anything is how you do everything. So if I'm lazy in the classroom, odds are you're probably lazy on the field too. Change it. Fix it. And it gives you that opportunity to be lazy because you're doing it in the classroom. Let's attack it and be the best. At least work to be the best. Are we all going to be the best? No. And that's okay. But I'm going to try. I'm going to work. Because I want to grow. I want to get better every day. All right. And that's the last one then. Right? Build your skill. It's the only way we're going to grow. It allows me to grow when I start following this six-step process. Again, it's a lot to think about. Right? So going back to it, I think the biggest one that we want to focus on right now, coming after the speech, is learning how to press balls. Slow down. Right? Again, now we've got to do it in game situ situations. Right? Use practice time to figure that out. 
<coughs> coaches or other players, hey, right, that could be your call. You know, press ball right now. Right? Let's regroup. And then attack. Create. All right, so again, look at how this works. Right, a loss or a goal, extract the lesson. That's pressing calls. Commit the lesson to memory. Okay. That's going. That's that's making that adjustment. Okay. That's adapting, okay. and then move forward with confidence. Okay. What can you do about it? It happens. Okay. Too often we see we take this loss and it just right. We spiral out of control. What can you do about it? Okay. Not much, right? What we can do about it though is move on the positive. Find the lesson. Right? Push pause. Evaluate what's going on. It could be whatever it is right then in that moment. Okay. That loss could be that goal. Hey, what did I just learn? Well, don't move there when he moves there. And again, that's simplified, right? But figure it out. Okay. Learn from it. That's that building that skill they don't see. All right, motivation. We'll start to move a little bit quicker here now. All right, that's the biggest one I like. Right, mindset. It's critical. It'll come into each one of these from here on out now. Okay, so the motivation in which we break. Right, first off, you've got to have a positive experience in what you're doing. If it's not positive experience in what you're doing, right, we've got to figure out how to change that. Okay? If you go there and dread it, right, again, first, maybe that's our mindset that we need to attack. Okay? But from a coaching standpoint, we've got to create it. That's our job, is create something that just everybody wants to be part of. Okay? Now, most of it is an intrinsic drive. I'm going to ask you the question, why do you play the game? Right? It's probably one of the hardest questions you'll answer. It's going to take you a long time. There's very few people here that would be able to answer that immediately. They say, I love them. Why do you love them? Well, it's something I've always done, but why? We have that hard, that ability, not very strong ability to answer that question right off the bat. Another take home for you. Figure out why you play the game. What drives you? What motivates you? to get up tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., or not even that, at 5.30 a.m. to go around the fun run tomorrow. Right. We'll see. No, I'll ask you that tomorrow too, call that. Okay? Right. And then as you move, what's your mindset like? When I get ready to step onto the field, step onto the court, what's my mindset? When I go through the weight room doors, what's my mindset? What is it? What does it have to be, and what is it currently? Make sure that they align when I go through there. Okay, some other things that you do. What's your legacy statement? What's your greater purpose? Um, and then here, starting to dive in, what's your why? Why do you do what you do? What are your val what's your vision? What do you want to be? Your mission, your daily approach, how you're going to get there. Okay? Your mission will break down your vision. Again, these are some of the teams that that I have, that I work with, and you see footballs over here on the right side. Hey, a unified brotherhood striving for greatness in all aspects of life. It says nothing about football. That's it. That's what we're looking for. Again, so we start again, the, the, the process is slow. Because we want to take time and make sure that we're doing it right. So this sat up on the rack all spring. Every day, on the rack, they could see it. Okay. The semester before that, we sat and talked about it. We wrote things up onto the wall, onto the board, okay, so that we could figure out exactly what we want to be. And then start defining what does it look like in our values. Okay. A family, we're passionate, relentless intensity, okay, dedicated and effort. Okay. Mike Fowler's in here, would you say that's part of what we do every day? It really is. Okay. Two years ago, was it? Well, I don't know if it was that as strong as not as strong as it is today. Okay. Again, they bring they bring the energy. Right. Six a.m. in the lift group. I mean, that intensity is, is hot in there. Okay. It's, it's, it's a fun place to be in. We got to bring that every day in what we do. Okay. Again, like I said, your mission will break down that vision. Okay. It basically tells us how do we need to be great. Right? What is greatness? Somebody who's committed. Somebody who's positive. Hard working. Right? Doesn't give in. Right? And loves the game, right? the process, and each other. If we do that every day, 
we'll be pretty darn good. We have the opportunity to be great. Right? We have that opportunity. Right? So we create. Again, that's talking about Bose. Don't work a little bit, but you get the idea. Right? But you gotta set them on your own. Right? I want you to see what your vision is. Right? What's your daily mission? And right? what are your core values? Because right? that's what's gonna motivate you every day. That's what puts your feet on the floor, like we said. Impact, inspire, influence, greatness in everyone's life. That's what motivates me every day. Right? That's what gets me up. Right? That's what I attack. That's what we love to do. All right, confidence is a choice. Have I done everything necessary to be great today? Okay, five key pillars in preparation. You want to be a great athlete. Okay, now, obviously, to stay in school, you've got to work on academics. Okay, but I'm talking about being an athlete. Okay? Someone who is stepping onto the field of play. Right? We've got to lift. Right? We've got to be stronger. We've got to be powerful. That's going to help with our injury uh, reduction. Right? I've got a condition. I've got to run. Right? Running is conditioning and speed work. Right? Could be changing direction and agilities. Right? So it all fits into the running category. I got to play the game. I got to pick the game up. I got to work on the skills of the game. Okay? This is preparation. I got to work on my nutrition because of poor nutrition, lifting, it was just a worthless hour. Okay? Um, and then how I recover. If I have poor recovery from session to session, day to day, my performance is going to drop. That's a whole other speech. Okay? Super compensation. Okay? Again, we have the ability to assess it. Okay? And we'll see that here. It's a weekly commitment tracker. Okay? So if we're going to lift three days a week, if we're lifting on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday, right? we can see where you score. So we actually define what uh, resistant and reluctant, existing, compliant, committed, and compelled are. And then you grade yourself. You fit into that category. Okay. And what we want to see is obviously we want to be in the green category. Am I committed right, to lifting on that Monday? And now here's what's going to happen. Not all your scores are going to be in those green categories. There's going to be a day that I went to McDonald's because I just wanted McDonald's. It's okay. You just can't do that every day. But again, my nutrition maybe on Tuesday just wasn't that good. It was more existent that day. That's okay. But now I've got my commitment goals of what I can work on in a given week to be better next week. And what? My mindset, I just lost it. I've got to be better than that because I want to be the best. Next Tuesday is not going to happen. I got to better prepare myself and plan accordingly right? because I had this class, I had that, and I just didn't have time. And that was the easiest thing to do. Right? The path of least resistance is McDonald's. Change it. Prepare. Okay. Ah, look at that guy. That's when I had hair back in the day. Okay? That was me. That's me. I'll give you a story about myself in terms of preparation. I sucked. I don't know why. Dead serious. Uh, so if we had, I don't know how many pitches we had. If we had like 20 pitches on the team, I was like 19 and a half. There was one guy, another guy who gave him a fight for that bottle spot. Anyway, um, uh, the, only way, the only reason I was on the team uh, is because I was left-handed. And I lucked out. Right? I guess I got some decent genes uh, from my parents in that context. I just couldn't throw the ball very hard. Um, and so I registered my first year. I made the team. Um, I registered my first year, you know, had the opportunity to get stronger and more powerful um, and work with my strength coaches uh, there. And then uh, in year two, you know, I, mean, I think I'm great. I mean, mom and dad always said, like, you're the, you're the best, right? Like, you're so good. Yeah. Like, so I believed it. I thought I was halfway decent. And then um, when you step out on the field and you're really not that good at all, and it's, it's obvious, and I still remember there was – one guy, uh, Casey, State, that guy hit a freaking ball. Uh, so at Towson, there in, in left field, there's like a like a gully, and it like went over the gully into the road. I've never seen a ball hit that. Well, I have seen one later on, but I've never seen a ball hit that far in my life before. I'm like, oh my god! Like, holy cow, what did I just get into? So anyway, I played zero innings that year, also. And so now I'm two years into playing. I haven't played a, a single inning in a game. So now I'm into my third year, right, and I get seven. Four of them came in one game. But why did I get the opportunity in that game? It's because I worked my tail off. Right? I prepared because I was passionate about the game. I loved it. Like, what else was I going to do? Right? I'm not going to play on some club team. 
Like I made the team, right? I think I have the ability to play, right? My mindset was, right, you have the ability to play, you just gotta make, you just gotta get the opportunity. And then once you have the opportunity, you gotta take advantage of it. Right? And the only way you're gonna take advantage of it is if you prepare better than everybody else because you're never gonna throw the ball 90 miles an hour. It's never gonna happen. But if you prepare, you have the opportunity to get better. So that's what we did, that's what I did. Right? I'd work, I'd go to the coach's office, I'd watch film, and you name it. Right? I was in there getting after it. So I, I got an opportunity to, to make a start uh, through four innings in that start, and I was ecstatic coming out of it. So now I'm three years in, um, I'm moving into my junior year now, and um, again, because I worked extremely hard in what I was doing, I got some early opportunities to play. And I was successful, you know. And so then um, we're now on spring break. I got an inning here, inning there in relief as we're going. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know. I'm still working hard on what we're doing. And we're getting off the bus, and coach says, you got game two today. This was at UNC Chapel Hill. They were a top 25 team in the country. He said, Matt, you're starting game two. I'm like, oh, that's different, right? We're in the American East. I tell you, like, the American East is like, not very good baseball. But it's good, but it's not great uh, baseball. But now you're stepping into the ACC, and you're stepping into one of the top teams in the country, and you're going into their field. Right? We're talking about pressure. Right? What was I going to do, not play? Right? I did that for three years. Right? I didn't have much pressure at that point. Right? So all I had to do was go out and perform. But I didn't have to have negative mental self-talk because I had done the things necessary to be able to be in that position at that time. Um, the, the game, pro well, I got to start before that. This is how I think I got the UNC start. I got to I got to start against UNBC. I took a no-hitter into the seventh inning. I got my first college victory. Now I get this start at UNC. Okay? And um, I ended up throwing a complete game shutout. The first time in 132 games that they had been shut out. Oh, that was 2-0. And we get home, and next week we start conference play. I'm now the number four starter, just like that. And I went five and two. I should have been six and two. We're not going to hold it against it. My closer, coach comes out and says, hey, Matt, when you got Rivera, you bring him in. Now, our closer at that time had set the saves mark at the school. So we had the most saves in school history. And he was a stud. <coughs> and he comes out and blows it. Uh, I'll forget. He's my roommate, so. <laughs> later. Um, got an opportunity to play in the Collegiate Summer League. Um, again, I go up there in the Collegiate Summer League, and again, it's like, oh, there's this guy. You know, he steps on the mound. He's throwing like 82, 83 miles an hour. Jump. Uh, by the way, at USC, he only had a fastball and change. The coach wouldn't let me throw a curveball because he thought it wasn't good enough. That was it. Two pitches. Okay. Figure it out. Okay. But anyway, so I go up there, and... Um, I still don't play. The first like two weeks, I get like an inning here, an inning there. And then I finally get a start. And we end up coming out. I think it was like a 3 2 win. We got that one. And then I got the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And so all of a sudden, now we're, I'm 6 0. Right? I get an all star uh, opportunity. And now we're competing in front of scout, you know, numerous scouts. Um, and now I'm 6 0, and the guy on the other side is 6 0. And we're in the championship game together. I didn't start this. I didn't start that. I came in. I came in like the third inning, and um, uh, it was end up like a one nothing game. So he got the victory. I did not. Okay. But again, you look at that two years ago. I would have never. You know, like, yeah, he's, that's not his story, right? In terms of talent wise, but it's what you do, right? what mindset that you take, okay? and the efforts that you bring will dictate your outcomes. If I would have quit because I wasn't playing, I can tell you I wouldn't be standing here right now. I wouldn't have had opportunities that I've had to travel all over the world to present, talk to other strength coaches. No, it wouldn't exist. So again, it is important. It is critical to what you do. All right, looking at intensity management, watch this article, this video up here. Oh no, now you guys watch it two times while I fix the batteries. <laughs> How many of that is us? Like those are good dudes are nuts. Right? But again, some of us 
we thrive off that intensity. Right? We just bring that, right? And then there's the guys in the middle, right? calm, collective. Okay? What we should be looking for is highs that are never too highs and lows that are never too low. Those dudes are nuts. Okay? Now, is that going to be you on Saturday? Nah, getting after it. Okay? How can I prepare for high pressure? It's the preparation work that we put in. And then it's the mindset that we attack. If we're out there to that right where you've got high pressure situations, right? this isn't necessarily high pressure, but in the moment, this is high pressure. I've got 35 people looking at me. And I've got to make sure that I do this right because I want to win. Right? It's a little bit of pressure. Not what you're going to see when you're out in the, in the College World Series. Right? Not what you're going to see when you're at a national championship game. Right? That's high pressure right there. Right? Have you done everything necessary? to be where you need to be, to be able to control this piece. Can you control this? Okay. Not too high, not too low. Right. Optimal performance occurs right in the middle. So if you have that high intensity speech, cool. Yeah, let's figure out how to dial it back a little bit. You have somebody who's not, let's dial it up a little bit. Because okay. if we're down there in boredom, you know, performance isn't going to be that great. How do we, how do we get that? Okay. Figure it out. Okay. Move into that, that optimal perform or preparation. Okay. Attention and control. Okay. I love this picture. <laughs> how else do you figure out how? I mean, that's distracting. Like, what? Right. Now, why I put that on there is not because of that guy. Right? It's because of this guy, number 34. Right? And this is the easiest sport to see it in. We're taking foul shots. What do we do? What's that? What do you have when you're taking before you take that shot? What do you do? You go through a routine, right? And it's like taught. Right? We teach this with like little kids. Like, hey, when you step up for a free throw, are right, you gonna get some routine? It could be two bounces of spin, right? Whatever you want to do. But we specifically teach that. That might be the only time we actually teach anything related to mental toughness. Because what's that doing? We got an old girls basketball, women's basketball back here in the back. What does that do when you go through your routine? It allows us to focus, right? To focus on what? What I'm about to do, right? What's most important next? That's what allows me to focus on. So why don't we create these routines in everything that we do? Why not? It allows you to focus on what's most important next. Is your body present? Okay. Where's your mind? Again, it goes back to the mindset. Where is it? Okay. Focus on what matters. This is just an activity that allows us to see it. Okay. You can teach it. We go back to that John Wooden quote. Right. You can teach it, but if you don't emphasize it from here, it's just lost. Okay. It's got to be emphasized. Okay. We've got to figure out how can we bring this to life? The teams that we work with, we work on that, right? We bring in our routine before we step onto the rack. Drill it. Right? Eventually, I, need, I just need that thing to become the norm. Right? When you're in a poor mindset, something that is challenging to you, you go through your routine that is a mindset reset. It allows us to attack that moment only. Figure it out, create your own. Right? Right, so we've seen that. Other things that we can do, focus. Uh, has anyone done a concentration grid before? All right, so in a concentration grid, in this grid here, you start at zero, you scratch that out, and work all the way up to 99. And you can do it nice and quiet. You want to make it more challenging, have people talk around you. Okay, turn up the music. Now, in, a, in an activity like this, most of you are doing it right now, I can see you. Okay? <laughs> it's cool, go ahead, keep doing it. But what I'm going to tell you most of you are doing right now is you're trying to remember where two is. Right? Because you can't find one yet. Right? Or whatever number that you're on. What I'm telling you is you're actually slower. Because you're not focused on the current number at hand that you're looking for. Find one first. Then go back. Then go to two. See? Where's seven? Right? But you found eight, I bet. Huh? Again, so what's happening is because you found eight, your mind is focused on that too, but it has 
It doesn't have the ability to focus on where 7 is. And it's going to actually take you longer to call. So again, another activity that you can work on to help working on singling the focus. Again, does it work on optimal transfer? No, you've got to figure out how to take it from here and then apply it there. That's the biggest jump that needs to happen. This is just an activity to figure it out. Okay? All right, so again, mindset is everything. Okay? You guys want to do that, though? I should have brought out here. See who the be real winner is. Okay? All right, we got two more here. We're done. Three more. We're done. Emotional control. Okay? How many of them? Hopefully, that's not a must. Okay? But again, we already talked about this. Right? With our negative emotions that come in. Right? Fear, disgust, despair. These are, these are things that we see in a game all the time. Okay? And we also see it in the stands, the parents. Right? We've seen more like parent fights and stuff like that with referees. And, I mean, it's freaking nuts these days. Okay? So what do you do? If I asked you right now, what would be the first thing, right? So you have something that you're angry about, what do you do? What's the first thing you would do? Hmm? Press pause. Right? Step back. Does it really matter in that moment? If I continue to let my emotions take over, this is just going to get me. It gets me nowhere. Okay? So step back, right? Get your mind right. Figure that out. Right? Step up and get after it. Attack what you're about ready to do. <coughs> that's where the difference comes into play, and that's how we get better. Got it? Cool. All right, mental rehearsals. Other things that we can do here now from a mental standpoint. Guided imagery, visualization. See it before it happens. It's actually research that looks at visualization uh, and actually go through where we're looking at the sights, the sounds, the feels, the tastes, the smells. Like, so what does the locker room, I don't know if I should ask this question, what does the locker room smell like before a game? Right? That might be a bad smell we don't want in our, in our mind. Right? But let's say out on the field, right? Uh, for baseball, for me, like, I, could, I still smell like the smell of the glove. I can still smell. I understand what that smells like. Right? Could be a volleyball. Right? Um, right? What does that feel like? What does warm-ups feel like? Right? Guide yourself through them using sight, sound, feel, taste, and smell. Right? It starts to get you into that moment. Right? It starts to visualize then what is actually happening. Go through the play in your mind. I mean, I never played, so that's all I did. Right? That's all I could do. Okay, it'd be cool. Like, if I'm out there, like, this is what I'm doing. Right? Might as well. What else am I going to do? Just stand on the sideline. <coughs> but you will actually see yourself improve. Okay? There's plenty of research out there that looks at it. How long does it have to take? Okay? I think that's the biggest problem. Everybody thinks it's got to, well, i got to sit down, i got to find 30 minutes, 45 minutes to really sit here and do some visualization. No. How many of us have, like, 10 minutes before, between classes? <coughs> How many of us have 30 seconds of that 10 minutes where I'm not doing anything? When I'm sitting in the seat before the teacher starts? What if I just did it then? Why does it have to be 45 minutes? Yeah, that comes back to that mindset. Like, oh, it's 45 minutes. Oh, I can't do it. I don't have the time. 30 seconds. Let's go. Right? Hopefully you're visualizing a play right now in your head. Because that's what we're trying to do. Right? All right, you see what it enhances. And the last one is your routines. It allows you to be in it. It allows you not to react, but puts you into a better response. It goes back to the E plus R equals O. It brings you a better response in what you're doing. Okay? And that's what we want to target. We don't want to react. Reactions are emotional. They're emotionally driven. We want to be in the response category. Right? That response category, press pause, allows to think, right? brings us the exact actions that we want that are warranted for that moment to allow me to become better at what I'm doing. Use your routines to help you with that. Right? When you get out of that mindset or the poor mindset, right? use your routine to help get you back. Again, you can use the routines whenever. Right? At the start, right? again, it goes back to now awareness. Right? It goes back to my teammates. Right? My teammates see that I'm struggling mentally, I'd hope that they come up and say something to me. Because obviously I can't see it. I'm blinded by whatever that may be. And again, that would be a good teammate. Is it about that team getting far? Far? Yeah. Right? When, it, when it's open like that, and the team and it's, it's free, 
where somebody comes in, and I'm not going to get pissed off at them? Because at the end of the day, it's not about them, me and them. It's about our vision. Go back to what the vision was. It's about where do we want to go as a group. That's what it's about. So I have to have that vision in play first. Because if it's not there, nothing drives me. My motivation is low already. I have nothing driving me to get better. And create the vision. Know where you want to go so others can help get you there. And when we do have that low mindset, right, or a poor mindset, I have others who are also all on that same path. I know where we want to go to help get me back on it. And that's going to be a successful team. Guaranteed. And it's not personal anymore. It allows you then to take that step back. Right? Because too often people are scared to say something because I don't, want to, I don't want somebody to think that I'm mad at them. It's not about you. It's about us and where we want to go. Right? One thing that we use if we're going to do it, we close it off with some sort of handshake. High five. Right? Again, the other day, right? uh, one of the athletes uh, in the weight room, it just wasn't going right. Attitude came in. Right? wasn't following what he was supposed to do in the weight room. Right? I asked for 10, he did 7. Right? Um, you know, we had a talking, right? one that was loud, right? because right? it wasn't part of where we were going. It wasn't part of our vision. But at the end of it, I couldn't just leave it there. Right? Because now he still thinks it's personal. Right? He don't like it. I'm not going to work hard for him. Right? That's, yeah, I agree. So we brought him aside afterwards. I put my arm around him. I said, hey, you understand why, why I called you out. Right? You understand that's not what we do. This isn't the, this isn't the approach that we take. Right? How you do anything is how you do everything. Right? From the beginning, when you walked in, I could tell right off the bat that your attitude and mindset was not right. It was not right to attack the day. You are just going about it. You were existing, maybe even worse. I had people tell me at the rack, hey, Matt, can you move this guy? Right? Because uh, he's messing with our mojo. Right? Like our flow and the weight room, he's messing with it, and we don't like it. I'm like, no, you move it. And why I say that, why you move it, is because, again, are we on the right path? If he isn't, he needs to know. He needs to know from you, and it's not about the two of you. It's about where you want to go right, as a group. And you're not going to accept that because it's not good enough. Right? They talk to him. Right? And so, again, we bring it over. So he, then he did seven reps when I asked to do ten, you know, in movement prep work uh, or so activation as we get ready for our lift for that day. And again, so the target was on him now. And then he goes over and he's in the lift. He's getting ready. They're starting up the lift and, you know, uh, three of the guys, there's four guys at the rack, three of the guys are actually starting to set up. And he's just standing there. And that's when it came on. That's when we, we, you know, we opened it up, made sure that he was aware that this isn't how we move, this isn't what we do, but then we brought him in and talked to him about it afterwards. Right? We closed it out saying, hey, it's not about me and you. Right? It's about where we want to go. And if I allow it now, right, then it's going to happen out there because you know, it's allowable. It's going to happen again. If it happens again in the weight room, how hard is that guy going? To, how hard is that guy working? And he's just, uh, right? we've seen it, like um, early morning lifts. Right? Right? Yeah, if he's not working hard there, then is he getting better in that moment? Is he compounding each of those days then on top of each other to reach that outcome of improved performance, getting stronger, getting more powerful? can't let it happen here because at the same time if I allow it here it means it's okay for it to have happened out there which is the field and I can't let that happen either. so it has to be addressed okay. all right I think that's all I've got any questions at this point I think that cover off <laughs> anybody have any, qu any questions related to mindset and other topics all right. Well, yeah. Have you ever had a moment in your career playing baseball where you had doubt in yourself? Uh, you thought maybe like 
you thought maybe you can't you can't beat this team or you don't have necessarily the skills that it takes to do what you have to do? Well, see, I, I would say no. Right? And part of the reason being is um, I think where I played growing up, my team, I think I won maybe four or five games in four years in high school. Um, our high school team was poor, so I understood how to lose. And I think that's something that we don't see these days. Right? When we start to lose, we change teams. We go somewhere else and win because we, it's, a, it's a win at all costs mindset. Okay? It's not learn how to lose because when you learn how to lose, you learn how to get better. And so by improving and getting better, right, again, we lost to a team in baseball, this is terrible. We lost 36 to nothing. That's awful. Like, that's like dreadful. Awful. 36 to nothing. That's horrible. That's, that's a football score, right? Well, I, I, I didn't throw that game, right? I just want to say that. But I had that in the next game. We won 7 6. I could have easily gone in there, like, man, this team's going to blow us out, and we just got 36 to nothing. And at the end of the day, does it matter? Like whether I win or lose today, in five years, am I gonna remember it? Like I actually like for this speech, like when I first gave it, I had to go back and see what my record was to make sure I had it right in case somebody Googled it. Right? I didn't want to like inflate it, you know. Um, but again, we would, you know, so like, I, I don't even know. You know. I actually had to go back and look to make sure it was 132 games, right? That's that um, Chapel Hill had been shut out. It's somewhere around there. I give the speech enough now that I'm known for part of it. Um, and yeah, we'll remember those big ones. Um, but again, at the end of the day, for me, like it, it didn't matter. Like I understood that, hey, I'm not, I may not win every game. I mean, name one pitcher that has. And we're gonna lose games. But I'm not gonna, I've already lost, I think, if my mindset is I can't beat them. It doesn't matter who we're facing. Right? We had no business beating UNC Chapel Hill. We had beat them one time in the history of the school prior to that. One time. And we had no business beating them, right? I mean, you, you, when you step out onto that, it's a different. It's different. When you watch those guys hit, it is different in, in batting practice. <coughs> you know, I mean, it's like nothing you've ever seen. You know, and I had the opportunity to work with the Toronto Blue Jays as well, and then you see that, and that's even better. And those guys suck. <laughs> to be honest, they were gone two or three years later. They were let go because they weren't good enough. We had one guy making to the major league base that I got to work with, um, and again, you know, that was it. And he got released from the Blue Jays and got picked up because he wasn't good. I think they, they had him at shortstop. San Francisco picked him up, moved to the left field, and all of a sudden, three years later, he's in the World Series. Winning a World Series win. Right? They figured it out. Right? But again, you know, we didn't have any business here, but again, I, if I, I've already lost it, that's my mindset. So, I, mean, I, I don't think I had that. Because I don't think I'd be where I'm at now without these opportunities because I had that mindset. But again, at the end of the day, why? Why would you have that? What does it get you? My, my first one would be, what's your why? Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Right? Not from you, from, from, from them. Right? Um, it would also then, what is your vision? Right? Is everybody on board with that? Right? I think most of the time that doesn't exist. Or we don't have a specific defined vision of where we want, you know, what's our, it's not, hey, we want to be in the national championship game. That's an outcome. What's bigger than that? Look back at the one that was with football was that it was a, that brotherhood striving for greatness in everything that we do. Well, I think that's where it starts, right? You've got to have something over top of you, right, that governs you, right? Without that, you sound like a boss, right? You sound like somebody's like, oh my God, why is she gonna let me? Right? But when we have that big picture and everybody has agreed upon it and everybody has seen it, it gives you the opportunity that it's not about you and them. It's about that picture. 
Right? So when, I, when you go and say something, right, it's not about your interactions. It's about the big picture. And it gives you opportunity, I would say. Then it's a matter of the words that you choose, the tone in which you use, and the timing in which it's done. If those aren't good, it could go downhill fast. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's really situational based. It's understanding the situation, understanding the moment, understand how you come across that at that point. Right? There could be, it could be something as simple as, you know, they might lash back out at you. And then coming back later say, hey, what's going on? Like, you, you could have a bad mindset as well, react emotionally and lash back. And then fire, right? Team, right? It's all health breakdowns at that point. Yeah, you need to find your event, press pause, right? Maybe come back to them a little bit later and say, hey, you know what? What was going on? <coughs> I'm not going to hold it against you. I mean, it happens. Like, we know that. Right? What's going on? Like, ah, I just had a bad day. Right? It's where we take things and allow them to impact other things. Right? Let's say you have a bad day. Right? You fail the test. Right? I have a bad day, whatever. And I take it home and lash out at my kids. Right? It can happen. And it's emotionally driven. So I think you got to find that. I don't know. Hopefully I answer it a little bit. So I've been getting involved with the youth sports. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to teach kids how to do Well, that's hard because of the society in which we're in is this win at all costs, and they're paying money. Right? So they're paying a lot of money uh, to, to win games. Um, my question would go back, what is your vision within that organization? <coughs> Too often our visions within the organization are not development. Right? They may say it's development, but then all we play is like 500 games in a year. When do you practice? If it's about development, you kind of have to practice a little bit. Because right? what, what are games? Games are where you show what you've been working on. That's all a game is. I think that's the problem. That it's so focused on playing games that we never focus on the development pieces. So winning and losing doesn't matter because you've never, when have you reflected off of a loss? Right? We all, we've all lost it. Even in these games where we played a lot, did we ever have a session? We never have time to sit down. I, was, I saw somebody's post the other day, in a weekend they played seven games. This was in women's lacrosse. Seven games in a weekend. That's like, that's like, you know, for you guys up there, Jay, like that's like, well, we'll see you next week. You know, for the PTs, we're like, yeah, right? That's exactly what it is. That's nuts. Right? But when did they get to develop? When did they get to reflect back? When did they get to learn on those pieces to be able to grow from that? And I don't think that happens. And I think once, if you can get that to happen, and so if we go back to like when I played, we didn't, have, we didn't play anymore. Before that, it didn't exist. And we didn't play games like that. You know? And at the same time, we didn't have as many op options either. Our opportunities were a lot less. So now, like, I mean, you might have like six soccer clubs just in this area that you can go play for. If I'm not getting time here, well, I'm going to go over here and play this one. I never learned how to work harder because maybe I could get time. Right? Because you're paying $3,000 to play on that club, my kid should play. And if they're not, I'm taking you over here. We never gave them a lesson to work on. It happens all too often. Reflect, see what you can do. Right? You can find time to reflect. I mean, it's not like it has to take three quarters of the game. You get practice time. You know, find some time or find some time after the game. You know, find some time before the next game or whatever it is. You might have to start small, you know, and build. But I'd venture to say the grand scheme of it is truly not about development. They'll say it is, but I say, sh sh show me the money. Show me where development is occurring. Statistically, show me where it's occurring. How many hours? So again, anyway, when you become a parent and you involve your kids in that, that's going to be the first thing I'm going to ask. Because they're going to give you the sales pitch like, ooh. Man, yeah, this team, this club's best. Right? Their sales pitch is going to be rock solid. Is it your money? Oh, we're going to go this tournament, we're going to go that tournament. It sounds all lucrative. Yeah, but when does my kid get better? When do we work? 
right? When we learn from some of these things, how do I develop right that mental edge? Because I've never worked on it. Oh, I, I went 0 for 4 that game. I've never had the opportunity to work on any piece from the land to that. Hopefully that helps. All right, we're good. All right, well, appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you very much.